Hello, welcome to the volunteer training for the Go Big Central Colorado Bighorn Sheep Survey. I'd like to start by thanking you for your interest in volunteering for the project. My name is Megan Mueller. I'm Senior Conservation Biologist with Rocky Mountain Wild. Rocky Mountain Wild is a conservation organization that works to protect, connect, and restore wildlife and wildlands in the Southern Rocky Mountain region. Protecting biodiversity in the region is a big job, and we know we can't do it alone. We need citizen scientists to collect data in the field to help advance our goals for conservation of bighorn sheep. So I'm excited that you're interested in contributing to the Central Colorado Bighorn Sheep Survey. This webinar will cover everything that you need to know to participate in the project. I'll start with an introduction to the project. Then I'll talk a little bit about bighorn sheep conservation status and research needs and explain why we need citizen scientists. We'll also talk about how to get started with iNaturalist, the app and website that you will use to record observations. Then I'll show you where and how to record observations of bighorn sheep, domestic sheep, and goats. Finally, I'll go over some safety considerations and provide you with resources if you're interested in learning more. So let's start with an introduction to the project. Um, the Central Colorado Bighorn Sheep Survey is a citizen science program engaging volunteers in recording observations of bighorn sheep and domestic sheep and goats in central Colorado. We have two goals. Uh, the first is to engage citizen scientists in collecting data to inform strategies to conserve the Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep in central Colorado. And the second is to educate the public about bighorn sheep conservation status and needs. I'm sure that most of you are familiar with Rocky Mountain Bighorn Sheep, but in case you aren't, um, these pictures show Rocky Mountain Bighorn Sheep. They range in color from gray to light brown to dark chocolate brown. And they have a white rump and a white lining on the backs of all four legs that stands out from their darker coat. Bighorn Sheep are named for the large curved horns borne by the males. The females also have horns. Male bighorn sheep, called rams, have heavy curved horns that are grayish brown and grow each year. Female bighorn sheep, called ewes, have much shorter and more slender horns with less curvature. Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep are really an iconic species across the West. They're one of the most popular watchable wildlife species in Colorado, and they provide sought-after hunting opportunities for roughly 300 hunters annually. Bighorn sheep were historically very abundant in Colorado and across the West. This map shows the distribution of bighorn sheep across the West in 1850 compared with 1960 and 2012. In the early 1900s, bighorn sheep declined to very no low numbers in Colorado and across the West. Um, but reintroduction of large herds into Colorado combined with improved management practices have made it possible for bighorn sheep populations to rebound substantially since 1950. However, despite continued conservation efforts, population growth has stagnated since the 1990s, primarily as a result of periodic outbreaks of disease. Bighorn sheep are at risk of developing respiratory disease from pathogens carried by domestic sheep and goats. Domestic sheep and goats commonly carry diseases like bacterial pneumonia that typically cause few deaths and little illness in domestic animals. However, bighorn sheep have not evolved resistance to these diseases. So this makes bighorn sheep highly susceptible to disease and death following direct contact with domestic sheep. Experiments have shown that there can be up to a 90% mortality rate within two months of exposure. Contact can occur when domestic animals are grazing on public land used by bighorn sheep, as you can see in the photo here, which shows a bighorn sheep traveling with a herd of domestic sheep in a wilderness area in Southwest Colorado in July of 2017. Wild sheep may also make forays across private ranches that have herds of domestic sheep and goats, so that's another way they can come into contact. After disease outbreaks in bighorn herds, the adult survivors may become carriers of the disease, and this can result in multiple years of lamb mortality. So populations may not really rebound after disease outbreaks. So, Effective separation of domestic sheep and goats from wild sheep is really critical to prevent or minimize disease transmission. However, the data on where bighorn sheep and domestic sheep and goats are likely to come into contact is very limited. In addition, 
As development, traffic, and recreation increase in Colorado, important habitat for bighorn sheep is being lost, and movement between habitat needed in different seasons is becoming more difficult. Bighorn may need to travel to follow the spring green up of vegetation upward in elevation of the snow melt, to move to lambing areas in spring, and to move between summer range and winter habitat where the snow isn't too deep. Movement between seasonal habitats and between different herds in Colorado may be limited for a few reasons. First, some really interesting recent research suggests that bighorn sheep pass on knowledge about migration routes to their young and that reintroduced herds have lost cultural knowledge of migration routes. Since many of the herds in Colorado were reintroduced, they may not have the knowledge they need to, to migrate. In addition, roads, infrastructure, and traffic may cause barriers to successful migration. Finally, bighorn may be more likely to encounter domestic sheep and goats during migration and contract diseases, and this could also reduce successful migration. There are gaps in our knowledge about habitat and migration corridors that bighorn sheep use in Colorado. We need bighorn sheep observations to help fill these gaps so that managers can plan for bighorn conservation as development, um, traffic, and recreation continue to increase in Colorado. So to summarize, Observations of bighorn sheep and domestic sheep and goats are needed to fill gaps in our knowledge in three major areas. First, we need more information about where bighorn sheep and domestic sheep and goats are likely to come into contact. Second, we need more data on bighorn sheep habitat use, including information on areas bighorn sheep use to move between seasonal habitats and information on potential, potential barriers to movement. Third, we need data on bighorn sheep overwinter survival to complement research being done by Colorado Parks and Wildlife. So this is where you come in. Citizen scientists can collect data needed to inform efforts to conserve bighorn sheep by recording observations of bighorn sheep, domestic sheep, and goats in central Colorado using the iNaturalist app. If you're interested in recording observations for the Central Colorado Bighorn Sheep Survey, the first step is to get started on iNaturalist. You can use iNaturalist to record observations either by using the iNaturalist cell phone app or by submitting observations through the iNaturalist webpage. If you plan to use the app, the first step is to download the iNaturalist app to your smartphone or tablet from the App Store or the Google Play Store. Next, sign up for a free account using your email address. This will only take a few minutes. If you don't have a cell phone or prefer to submit observations via the web rather than using the app, another option is to go to the iNaturalist website to sign up for an account. Either way, once you have an account, join the Go Big Central Colorado Bighorn Sheep Survey project on iNaturalist. If you plan to use the app, the next step is to make sure that the location function on your smartphone is on. To turn it on, go to your phone settings, then click Privacy and turn on Location. Once you've taken these steps, you're ready to use iNaturalist to start recording observations. We are asking citizen scientists participating in this project to record observations of bighorn sheep, domestic sheep, and domestic goats. So this means when you're out driving, when you're out hiking, and you see any of these three key species, we'd like you to let us know what you observe. You can record observations using the iNaturalist app or submit them via the iNaturalist website. Record your observation, you will first provide information on what you saw by taking a photograph or entering a description of what you saw into iNaturalist. It's ideal if you can take a photo to allow the iNaturalist community to confirm the identification of the species that you observed. If you use the app, you can take a photo from the app when you see the animal. If you aren't using the app, you can take a photo with a camera and upload the photo to the iNaturalist website when you're back at your computer. We also need information on where you saw the wild sheep or domestic sheep or goat. If you use the iNaturalist app to make observations, the app will use the GPS receiver in your phone to determine your location. If you aren't using the app, then make sure to record the coordinates of your location using a GPS unit if you have one, or if not, by marking your location on a map. And then you'll need to enter this information into the iNaturalist website when you're back at your computer. Next, record the date so we know when you made the observation. If you don't want to use iNaturalist at all, you can also email your observation to me at the email address that I'll provide at the end of this presentation. 
If you have the time and interest, you can also provide us with additional details on your observation that are very useful to researchers. First, it's useful to know the cardinal direction to the animals you observed from your standpoint and the direction of travel of the animals you observe, especially if you observe bighorn interacting with domestic sheep or goats. For bighorn sheep, it would also be great to know the number of adult females, adult males, yearlings, and lambs that you observe. This can provide some information on overwinter survival. You can find a guide on how to determine age and sex of bighorns at the link on this slide. It's also helpful to know the number of domestic sheep or goats that you observed. Finally, there's a field where you can write down any notes about your observation that you think might be of interest to researchers. You can find a guide with detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to use iNaturalist to record observations of bighorn sheep, domestic sheep, and goats on Rocky Mountain Wild's website at the first link you see on the slide. In addition, you can find two video tutorials on how to add observations to iNaturalist using the app on a mobile device or via the web on the iNaturalist website at the second link that you see on this slide. Now that you have the basics on how to use iNaturalist, I'm going to talk about where we would like citizen scientists to make observations. We are focused on collecting data on bighorn sheep in central Colorado in the general area depicted on this map. I want to emphasize that observations of bighorn sheep and domestic sheep and goats from anywhere in central Colorado are very useful. So don't worry if you aren't certain about whether you're in our specific study area when you're making an observation. If you're interested in making observations in other parts of Colorado, you should check out Mountain Studies Institute's statewide bighorn sheep monitoring effort on their website at the link that you see on this slide. We are particularly interested in observations of bighorn sheep, domestic sheep, and goats under near public land in the area shown on this map, which is both north and south of Highway 50 between Slida and Canyon City and southeast of Cripple Creek and Victor. A new management plan is being developed for public land in this area, which includes bighorn sheep migration corridor and other important bighorn sheep habitat. You can view a larger version of this map on the Rocky Mountain Wilds website at the link shown on, shown on this slide. Now let's talk a little bit about where to look for bighorn sheep. Um, the best place to look for bighorn sheep is in rocky terrain with good visibility and an uphill escape route. They tend to avoid wooded areas where their vision is limited because sight and flight are their defenses from predators. Bighorn also prefer grassy south and west facing slopes, particularly in winter, where sun and wind keep snow clear from the grasses because this makes both grazing and travel easier. Bighorn sheep are also attracted to salt applied to the roadways, so they can often be seen along roads near suitable habitat. Binoculars or a spotting scope can increase your odds of spotting bighorn sheep, especially from far away. And you can also take great close-up photos by attaching your cell phone to binoculars or a spotting scope with an adapter from the website at the link on this slide. However, don't worry if you don't have access to these tools. You can definitely make good observations without them. We need data on where domestic sheep and goats are likely to come into contact with bighorn sheep. This could happen in areas where domestic sheep and goats are allowed to graze on public land, which are currently somewhat limited in our survey area. In addition, it could happen when bighorn sheep are present on public land that is adjacent to ranches, hobby farms, or other private land, and when bighorn sheep make forays or migrate across private land. Observations of domestic sheep and goats are just as important to our research as observations of bighorn sheep. And then one last thing, it's important to note that you should not trespass on private property and be respectful of the privacy of private property owners when taking photographs of bighorn sheep or domestic sheep and goats, especially when it's possible that they may be on or near private property. To make observations, you're going to need to be able to identify bighorn sheep, domestic sheep and goats. This is pretty straightforward. However, it's possible to confuse bighorn sheep with mountain goats, domestic goats or sheep. This is especially true of young bighorn sheep. So I thought I'd share some tips for telling the difference. First, note that the young bighorn sheep in the photo on the left has a uniformly brownish gray coat with an obvious white rump patch that stands out from the rest of the coat. Mountain goats, domestic goats, and domestic sheep lack the obvious white rump patch that stands out from a darker coat. In addition, note that mountain goats are completely covered in shaggy white fur. 
Another good way to differentiate bighorn from domestic goats is to look at their tails. The tails of domestic goats usually point up while the tails of bighorns hang down. Finally, domestic sheep have woollier, thicker, fluffier coats than bighorn sheep and their ears tend to be larger and floppier than the ears of bighorn sheep. If you see bighorn sheep near domestic sheep or goats, immediately report your observation to Jamin Brigg, wildlife biologist with Colorado Parks and Wildlife. If you reach voicemail, leave a message with your contact information and a description of the observation. Make sure to include the location, date, and time of your observation. By immediately reporting your observation to Colorado Parks and Wildlife, you may make it possible for them to prevent the animals in question from causing a disease outbreak and save the bighorn herd in the area. Next, I'd like to go over a few safety considerations you should be aware of when participating in the project. First, both for your safety and theirs, keep your distance when watching sheep. They won't always show obvious signs of distress when watchers are too close. For a close-up view, use binoculars or spotting scopes and use a telephoto lens on your camera. The behavior of any wild animal can be unpredictable, so never approach them. If they approach you, back away slowly, keeping the animal in your view. Never turn your back to a goat or sheep as budding is natural behavior. Second, please resist the urge to feed sheep and goats. Feeding human foods to wildlife can be very harmful to them and cause them to alter their natural behavior and become tolerant of humans. It can also be pretty dangerous for people. In Colorado, feeding bighorn sheep or mountain goats is against state law. Third, please safely pull off the road and park before making observations from a vehicle. Fourth, leave your pets at home. Dogs and sheep don't mix. Finally, herds of domestic sheep on public land may be protected by livestock protection dogs that can become aggressive if they perceive a threat to the sheep. Mountain bikers and dogs can be perceived as a threat to the sheep. See the link on this slide for, the, for tips for interacting with livestock protection dogs. Next, before we wrap up the webinar, I'd also like to let you know that the Bureau of Land Management recently drafted a new management plan for public land in eastern and central Colorado that supports roughly 58% of the statewide population of bighorn sheep. Rocky Mountain Wild and other conservation organizations are asking the BLM to improve the safeguards for bighorn sheep in the draft plan. If you would like to take action to help bighorn sheep, you can go to the link you see on the slide on Rocky Mountain Wild's website and sign a petition to ask the BLM to improve the plan to conserve a bighorn sheep migration corridor and other important habitat, and to reduce the risk of herds being exposed to devastating respiratory diseases. I hope that you now have all of the information you need to participate in the Central Colorado Bighorn Sheep Survey. I thank you for your interest in the project and for taking the time to watch this webinar. You can find more information on the project and on bighorn sheep conservation in general on Rocky Mountain Wild's website. If you have questions or need assistance with any aspect of participating in the project, feel free to email me at megan, M-E-G-A-N, at rockymountainwild.org. You can also go to Rocky Mountain Wild's website to sign up to our email list to stay informed about potential opportunities to go out and look for bighorn sheep with groups organized by our partner organizations. Thank you again for your time and your interest in contributing to bighorn sheep conservation. I hope you enjoy participating in the project.